Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 462. Friday, June the 15th, 2018. The day after. <laughs> the day after the IG report. We'll get to that in just a minute. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say uh, again, congratulations. I uh, didn't have much time last night at the end of the video. But uh, congratulations really to everybody last night and uh, all the states. Uh, there was about five or six uh, elections last night where... Uh, Pro-Trump uh, candidates won and did really well, so that's a credit to all of you in those states, and you know who you are, uh, who did a really good job last night. Uh, Virginia and Maine and uh, uh, Vegas uh, had some good wins last night, but probably none more special than the win in South Carolina. So I got to give a big two thumbs up and a big round of applause for all my subs there in South Carolina. Patty Willing and, and all the folks, outstanding job. And you really need to be credited because it is hard to drag a swamp creature like Sanford out of the swamp, pull him up on the beach, and kick him in the ass. Hard to do. Deeply and uh, deeply ensconced, backed by the party, a lot of money behind him. In fact, they had no idea that he could lose that race. They assumed it was a lock. Had no idea. But you, folks in South Carolina, showed up big. And he lost by four and a half points, I think, something like that. And I had never heard of this woman he even ran against. I'd never even heard her name before. But I watched a short interview with her last night. She sounds really sharp. And uh, Katie, is it Addington or something like that? Um, seems like a real nice lady. Definitely a pro-Trumper. And that's how she won that race. She, run that, she won that race by sticking with the president. And, of course, um, uh, it's a very difficult thing to do. To, to defeat, to defeat uh, someone like that, especially in South Carolina. That's a pretty tough place to unseat uh, someone, a swamp creature like Sanford. But uh, you guys did it. You got it done. And uh, really, congratulations to you. And uh, hopefully South Carolina uh, has set the standard for let, uh, letting other people know around the country that when they think that, nah, we'll never get rid of this guy, we can't beat this guy, he's, you know, he's, he's too deeply entrenched. Well, South Carolina just proved last night you can drag a son of a bitch like that up out of the swamp and kick his ass. You certainly can. South Carolina just proved it. It's been done before. We saw it happen with Eric Cantor in Virginia. No one thought Eric Cantor could be taken down. He thought he was a lock, too. There's a lot of people who think they're a lock, and they're not. Just keep digging, my friends. Keep digging. We are winning. Hard to tell sometimes, but we are winning. <clears throat> okay, so the the uh, IG report is out. It's only been out for a couple hours, so we haven't had much time to digest all of it. It's 553 pages. I went and took a look at a little bit of it. That very first part of it that you see there, if you're looking at it, that was written by the uh, DOJ and the FBI, not by the IG. So I would completely ignore that the preamble. It's, it's completely uh, irrelevant. But... So far, I'm going to go through some of the juicier bits, and I, I think early, I think just my early analysis of it, and again, it's 553 pages. It's probably going to take a day or two, uh, you know, for it to fully be aired out for people to read through it and, and, and dig in there and get everything out that's, uh, that's important. But um, there are some things that we got, but I would say at this point, just pretty much like we expected, uh, no gigantic bombshell. Um, but a lot, I would say like a thousand knife cuts. So it's a thousand little knife cuts, uh, but no giant bombshell. Uh, but the little knife cuts, remember, this is just one of five reports that will be coming out. The next one will be coming out. We'll be looking at the way they handled getting these surveillance warrants using the dossier. So uh, we'll see how that looks. But as I said, what I was hoping for out of the IG report is, is it would build more momentum to get either a presidential commission or a special counsel or something. Something more than what we have now. Um, again, it took a year and a half to get this. Four more reports to come out. That could take six, seven years. We ain't got six or seven years. We need something to happen quickly. And I think that, again, I think that this will motivate a lot of members of the Freedom Caucus. And uh, I think that um, ultimately, though, Let's keep something in mind here. Trump was the one who actually was the guy they went after. And there's just some, I, I can't put it in words so much, but it's just a feeling I have that Trump does not seem like he, the type of guy who's just going to sit back and let all these perps off the hook. They tried to take him down and he knows it. 
something tells me Trump has got a plan that he's that he's playing this thing a certain way, the way that he wants to do it. Maybe it's a, a time frame. Maybe he wants to do it after 2018 elections. Maybe it's uh, something else. But something tells me that Trump has got a plan to take these people down. I don't know what that plan is, but it's just a feeling I have that ultimately we need to keep the faith. And even though a lot of us are very disappointed and frustrated when we see not so much the report, but the response from certain people about the report. Um, just uh, keep the faith and keep punching because Trump's on our team. Remember that. He's the guy who was the target of all this. And do you think he is the type of person that's going to let all this slide and let these guys just get off the hook? I don't think so. Let's all keep watching. Let's keep digging. Let's keep the faith and um, keep pushing for presidential commission, special counsel, redactions, uh, whatever. Anything we can get to keep moving the ball forward because we are winning at this point. It's just, um, it's a tough slog, as they would say. So let's go through some of the individual things that have already come out of the uh, IG report, which most of you have probably heard by now. If you haven't, then uh, this will be your first time hearing it, then you should enjoy it. Okay, so one of the first things that we learned that's pretty surprising that will it itself this will probably lead to the launch of a separate investigation something that we never even talked about or think much about and that we learn in the IG report is that the FBI accepted bribes <laughs> they accepted bribes now this is in relation to we assume leaking they're giving information to the media and uh, but we never really knew that there was something coming in return in the form of a bribe but the IG report basically says that the FBI accepted bribes and it highlights where numerous FBI officials accepted bribes from multiple media outlets. Tickets to sporting events, golf outings, drinks and meals, um, admissions to non-public social events. And uh, he describes all of these as policy violations. And that's something you see all throughout the IG report. It's a, it's, it's a policy violation, not a crime. There are no crimes. There are no crimes in the swamp, only policy violations. That's all, which is pretty much what I expected. As like I told you, uh, Horowitz is not going to lay out the grand conspiracy. He's going to look at individual things that were done and tell you whether or not they agree with policy or not. If he thinks they're criminal, he'll make a criminal referral, something like that. But that's why we need, you know, his job is to do an internal review of the DOJ and the FBI. He can't investigate the CIA. He can't investigate the coup. He can't investigate certain things. He can't interview certain people. I mean, it's a very limited scope that the IG has. That's why we need a either a presidential commission or a special counsel, one of the two. But that's the first thing that we learned that we haven't really focused much on or thought much about is the fact that these leaks by the FBI weren't just leaks to to harm Trump or just leaks because they like leaking, they're actually getting stuff in return for leaking. They have a game going where they're getting bribes in exchange for leaks. And so that obviously will have to be addressed. And so let's move on to the next thing. Well, probably the biggest bombshell, if there is a bombshell in the first couple hours after this report came out, it was this text mess, uh, text back and forth between uh, Page and Strzok. <clears throat> which had <clears throat> previously been not just redacted, but completely removed. It wasn't like they even just took a black marker and blacked it out. They just completely whited it out. They didn't even leave any part of this statement into this previous release of this particular series of texts, which Horowitz has uh, given us. <clears throat> and this is probably the biggest stuff. If you say bombshell of them all, this is probably it. And it's a text where... <clears throat> Loose Lisa Page uh, texts over to Peter's been stroking us, and she says, uh, Trump is not uh, going to become president, right? Right? At which point Strzok comes back to and says, no. No, he's not. We'll stop it. Hmm. That's pretty bombshell, don't you think? Trump's not going to become president, right, right. No, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Who's we? Who is we? And how were they going to stop it? 
<clears throat> maybe a little deep state coup, maybe a little insurance policy action, maybe the six agency task force was working on that, maybe that's what he was talking about. Maybe he and uh, Mr. Potato Head uh, had that plan already underway with their good friend Mr. Halper and some others. Something tells me that that particular text right there is going to open up a lot of questions. It's going to be very hard to explain, but I'm sure they'll try. But that's a pretty damning text right there. Well, we also, <laughs> this is a beauty right here. We also learned that Comey used a private email to conduct official business, as did Peter's been stroking us and loose Lisa Page. And probably all of them. We know that Obama was using one. We know that uh, Lynch was using one. Apparently, they all had their own private emails, which is fine, but you're not allowed to do government business in your private email. <clears throat> and that's exactly what they were doing, including Comey. <laughs> Just like the rotten Reverend Clinton. And according to Horowitz, this is inconsistent with department policy. Yeah, it's inconsistent with department policy, but it's also, depending on the nature of why you're doing it, why are you communicating outside of a government email system about business? That's the question you need to answer, is why? What was the motivation? I mean, were they uh, using it to talk about kitties or, or apple pie or something like that? Or were they talking about a deep state coup? So it's really why they had, uh, why they were doing this, why they were uh, talking about business related things on a private email uh, related to their jobs and exactly what was it that they were talking about. That's probably the questions that we need to be asking. But should it surprise us now that uh, Comey and Strzok and Page and all the rest didn't want to go after the rotten Reverend Clinton for having all this uh, uh, work related stuff on her private email server when in fact they themselves were doing private business, pr private uh, e using private emails for their uh, business as well. They were doing the same thing they were investigating the rotten Reverend Clinton for. No wonder they didn't indict. Oh my God. <clears throat> Peter's been stroked and this is obviously being called out in the IG report and it's basically suggesting that, uh, that he showed a willingness to take official action to impact the presidential election. That's a pretty strong charge, and apparently already Peter has been stroking us. Apparently his lawyer has already come out and made a statement stating that he doesn't agree with the IG's uh, finding on that. <laughs> Be interesting to hear uh, Strzok in front of a committee, a public hearing, uh, answering some of these charges. I'd love to hear, love to hear him explain this away. Would love to hear his excuse. We also have another thing here where the FBI set on Wiener emails for no good reason. 141,000 emails that were relevant to the Clinton email investigation. And the FBI never elaborated on why they didn't feel it was all that important to get to all those 141,000 emails. They didn't seem to be all that interested. <clears throat> and of course, that would, uh, depending on how you look at it, that could certainly be a crime. FBI set on Wiener emails for no good reason. Well, yeah, that was a good reason. They were trying to uh, prevent them from coming out and being made public because they would have swung the election toward Trump. And they were trying to do just the opposite. They were trying to swing the election toward Hillary and away from Trump. That is your explanation, Mr. Horowitz. Maybe we'll get to that down the road. Alrighty. <clears throat> Here's another funny thing. It's uh, these various comments that were made by FBI agents who were there for the interview of the rotten Reverend Clinton um, <laughs> and some of the comments that they made about the rotten Reverend Clinton. Um, one of them comments uh, uh, regarding her statement on the... Um, understanding what the C meant and those uh, 
whatever they were, reports or whatever it was that she was reading that had the C meaning classified. And uh, one of these uh, agents says that it's hard to, impossible to believe uh, uh, the ignorance about what the C meant. So he says, I filed that in the bucket of hard to believe. <laughs> they didn't believe her. The rotten Reverend Clinton. You think she was lying to him? She didn't know what the C meant? I'm pretty sure. Other agents had made comments such as, it's hard to believe how technically illiterate she was. Well, I don't know. Maybe. She's pretty stupid, but she's not that stupid. Um, another one says that Clinton's claims to her technological ignorance strains credulity. Yeah, it sure does. If you just actually take a look at the history of the Rotten Reverend Clinton, uh, back when she was first lady and any other time that she's been pressed in front of, uh, you know, a jury uh, uh, or in front of any um, uh, committee in Congress or anything else, how does she always get off the hook? She plays dumb. She goes into stupid mode. Uh, I don't know. I can't recall. Uh, I don't know. I'm not technically uh, proficient. That's what she does when she's running for election. Oh, she's the smartest person on the planet. But when she's got to answer for her crimes, she immediately goes into idiot mode. It's her technique. She's been doing it for 40 freaking years. In other words, these agents knew that she was lying to them. And then, of course, we have one of those agents who was in that interview who, after conducting the interview, texted his wife with uh, saying to her, you should know I'm with her. Yes, that's because you work for the FBI. I'm with her. The FBI. I'm with her. The Federal Bureau of I'm with her. We also learned that <clears throat> Andy McCabe continued to involve himself in the Clinton probe after he recused himself. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you think so? We also learned that um, apparently uh, during that period, Comey wanted uh, to uh, pull McCabe off of the case before he recused himself. And apparently there was some bad blood between Comey and McCabe about whether or not McCabe should have to step back. So that's why there was a delay. That's why McCabe waited so long because he was being pressured uh, from above, but he was fighting it. And uh, only at the end did he recuse himself, but then he continued to involve himself in it anyway, which is why McCabe is probably going to jail. Better go to jail. <laughs> yes, and then we get, again, we get Comey broke um, FBI with her procedures, but no political bias. Hmm. No political bias. Yeah, he broke procedures, but I didn't see any political bias there. Did you? I didn't detect anything like that. Hmm. Okay, you have to have quite an imagination to swallow that one. Fortunately, that's going to be proven untrue as more evidence comes out. Uh, let's see. Here's a good one. Comey did not know that... Uh, did not know that Wiener was married to Huma. He did not know that Wiener was married to Huma until somebody informed him of that. Do you believe that? How could you not know that Wiener was married to Huma? I mean, I, everybody knows that. I mean, how could you be the director of the Federal Bureau of I'm With Her and you don't know that the Rotten Reverend Clinton's right-hand woman is married to that perv, Anthony Wiener? been quite public for a long time, going back a long time. Now, you'd almost have to bury your head under a rock not to know that. I don't know if I believe Comey on this particular point, but that's what he claims. Comey also says that he cannot recall being notified of the uh, laptop of Anthony's wiener. He can't recall yeah, you're the FBI director, you're in the heat of a political campaign, it's about a month and a half before the vote, and all of a sudden your deputy, along with your number two man in counterintelligence, come up with a um, private uh, computer, laptop computer, 
belonging to a pedophile, which has apparently 141,000 State Department emails on it. And you can't remember whether or not you were told about that. Can't recall whether or not. It's just one of them little details that you wouldn't remember, right? <laughs> Why is he saying that? He's saying that because he don't know what, what everyone else is going to say. When he finds out what everybody else is going to say, then he'll tell us. But for now, Comey cannot recall being notified of Anthony Weiner's, uh, notified of the laptop uh, of Anthony's Weiner being in the possession of Strzok and McCabe. And uh, that's why he waited, he says, 29 days before he went and got a search warrant to search it, as if he needed one. <laughs> also, we also found out that there was another member of Mueller's uh, Hillary donor posse <clears throat> who was kicked off the team, and this was never made public. But apparently it wasn't just Strzok and Page. Apparently there was another lawyer uh, who was removed from the uh, Mueller's Hillary donor posse, and that's because he tweeted out something to the uh, effect of Viva La Revolution. Viva La Revolution. Yeah, and he's working on the Mueller team. Very well done. So uh, apparently there was a third person who was kicked off the Mueller team. Well done. We're just now learning about it. Here's a good one. Comey considered a special counsel after highly partisan attempts by Loretta Lynch to impede the probe. Well, that's something he already mentioned once before when he was in the hearings. He did mention that um, after that deal where, where Lynch said to call it a matter or whatever, he said he went back and thought about it and considered maybe the right thing to do would be to, you know, get a special counsel because now he was, he, he had been, you know, messed up in this deal because now he'd been told by the Attorney General to call it a matter, and that was a problem. And he thought at that point, maybe maybe I can get myself out of this by appointing a special counsel. Of course, he knows he never would have done that. He would have been crucified had he attempted that. He says that he discussed this with Sally Yates. That's right, Silly Sally Yates. Says that he discussed it with Silly Sally, and uh, that she apparently discussed it with Loretta Lynch, according to Silly Sally Yates, but Loretta Lynch can't recall that conversation. Loretta Lynch can't recall anything, can she? Nothing. She can't recall anything. Nothing. Hmm. Something tells me that's going to uh, generate a lot more digging into that, because that's just complete bullshit. Okay, that's just complete BS. I'd be the whole thing. Considering a special counsel, not in a million years, man. It wouldn't have taken him three seconds to figure out how that was going to turn out for him, uh, especially in the highly partisan nature uh, of the situation as it was. And then he goes and says this to Sally Yates, <clears throat> knowing good and well she's going to turn around and go to Lynch, knowing good and well it's going to fall right back downhill. So there's a whole lot of problems with that whole deal right there. There's some things going on here. Oh, you're going to love this one. This is one of my favorites. Horowitz found out by interviewing these FBI agents when he was asking about why they didn't get subpoenas and search warrants and look at all these Blackberries and devices and things and such uh, um, that belong to the Rotten Reverend Clinton and people in her inner circle. And the answer that the IG got when he asked these agents about why they didn't get subpoenas or why they didn't go in and look into all these devices of the Rotten Reverend Clinton and those around her in her inner circle, Horowitz is told, quote, because they thought that they might find so much classified information that they would become lost in the maze. Can you imagine that? Yeah, we're investigating this case right now that we're working on, but I don't know. I think we're just going to have to put it away because there's just so much damning information in this case and so much evidence that it's overwhelming. So I think in this particular case, with so much overwhelming evidence, we're just going to have to wrap up this investigation. We can't move forward. There's too much evidence. Too much evidence. To continue the investigation, we might end up in the maze. Horowitz rightly points out, he, needless to say, he wasn't humored by that. And it's funny, his response to it is like, he goes into like a 
three paragraph response to like, huh? You could have did this, you could have did this. He gives them two or three different options. You could have done this. 48 hours, you could have looked at this. We have keyword uh, capability within the FBI system. You could have narrowed it down. You could have done this and this and that. He gives them all sorts of things that they could have done. Horowitz didn't buy this excuse for a minute. And that one should certainly, uh, if, if, if you're in that crowd of people who are pushing, and I would be one of those, that there needs to be an actual investigation of the rotten Reverend Clinton, because there never was an investigation in the first place, this right here is the best piece of evidence that you could use to make that argument. Here they prove, here they admit, they admit that they did not go look inside those devices uh, or confiscate or subpoena other devices and other uh, equipment around the rotten Reverend Clinton and her inner circle because they thought, they thought that they might find so much classified information that they would become lost in the maze. <laughs> That's got to generate some uh, some real anger from a lot of people, and I would think a call for a real investigation of the rotten Reverend Clinton, which there should be. Well, <clears throat> Christopher No Shit Sherlock Ray, the FBI director, came out and made a statement, and it appears that in his statement, he had the gall to say the following. The FBI made mistakes, broke some rules, and did show, but they did not show, political bias. So he's recommending more training for those FBI employees. They made mistakes, broke some rules, did not show political bias. Well, I see a lot of political bias. Do any of you see any political bias? I see a lot of political bias. Like, F. Trump? <laughs> Did you catch that one, No Shit, uh, Sherlock Christopher Ray? Those were your employees. You might want to go back and review those uh, Peter's Been Stroking It's and Lisa Page text to see if maybe you overlooked something. Because I could swear I detected some political bias. They broke some rules. Yes, they broke some rules. Uh-huh. Seems to me they might have broken some laws, as in like sedition, leaking classified material, abuse of power, lying to a FISA court judge, lying to your boss, lying to the American people, and many other things that we don't even know about. Orchestrating, being part of orchestrating a deep state coup. How about that one? Yeah, they broke some rules. No shit Sherlock Christopher Ray. And what does no shit Sherlock Christopher Ray think we should do about it? More training. Oh, that's right. Maybe we should have some sensitivity training. Yes, that's right. What we're going to do now is have all FBI and DOJ employees go through a week of sensitivity training where they're going to be taught that they need to be nice to President Trump. They need to be nice to him. They need to like him and support him and should not show any bias. Yes, they can have some sensitivity training to the president because we certainly wouldn't want that happening in the ranks of the FBI and the DOJ, would we? Just some more training. That should take care of everything. A little extra training. That's all, that, that's all you need. And uh, that should resolve the problem. A little extra training, according to no shit Sherlock Christopher Ray. I can think of the type of training they should be doing. Maybe they should be training to make license plates up in uh, Mansfield. Maybe uh, they should be training to uh, move railroad ties from one end of a yard to another. Maybe they should be moving piles of stones from one end of the field to the other. Those are the types of training exercises I would have them doing in leg chains. That would be the type of training I would be referring to. Hmm. Making mistakes. I don't like it when people say that. Making It was a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. Yeah, well, you know, they were putting together an insurance policy in a deep state coup. Just a mistake. Happens all the time. Hey, people launch deep state coups all the time by mistake. I just launched a couple deep state coups last week by mistake. It happens. 
No, I'm sorry, no shit, Sherlock Christopher Ray. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. Here's a mistake. You're sitting at the dinner table, you reach for the smashed potatoes, and oh, you knock over a glass. Oh, I made a mistake. You get up in the middle of the night to take a whiz. It's dark. Oh, you stub your toe on the corner of the bedpost. Ouch. That's a mistake. You're adding 16 and 175.3945. And you forget to carry the decimal point, and you make a mistake. That's a mistake. A fucking deep state coup is not a mistake, Christopher Ray. Nor is an insurance policy. Nor is a agent provocateur to set up someone during a political campaign. Those are not mistakes, no shit, Sherlock Christopher Ray. Those are called crimes. Well, 553 pages, much more to come out. Like I said, no bombshells, really. Um, there's some pretty nasty stuff in there that's going to lead to a lot of people calling for special counsel. That's fine. Presidential commission would be my choice. Uh, calling for more action, uh, more unredacted documents. That's what we need to see. There's four more investigations coming up. We'll see if any criminal referrals happen. We know there have been five referrals made against five individuals by the IG for disciplinary actions. Disciplinary actions. Hmm. No, I think, again, this is why a lot of you are frustrated. Uh, but like I said, keep the faith because Trump, when you know Trump's responding to this the exact same way we are, he's sitting back going, huh? Disciplinary actions, sensitivity training, Bullshit. There be. I want to see. I, I want to come down uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and see these perps hanging from trees. Believe me, Trump's not going to sit back and let this thing slide. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Because I can tell you, he's not going to let this slide. It's not going to work. Let's see. <clears throat> One last thing. We can see that Paul Ryan is now maneuvering to screw us again. It's almost like Paul Ryan wants to try to make sure Republicans don't hold on to the Congress uh, in the fall because he's now working behind the scenes to put together a compromise immigration bill. Uh, first of all, he was for amnesty to begin with. So if Paul Ryan, big ears Eddie Munster Ryan, is already supports um, open borders policy and, he, and, he, and he's saying he's now got a compromise, that means it's worse. I mean, anchor babies and the whole nine yards. So what's he trying to do? Well, he knows that they're going to be in session during August. He thinks that'll be a good time to slip that one in on us. I surely hope that Trump does not sign this bill. And I know what Ryan's trying to do. He's trying to uh, put the president in a tough position uh, coming up into an election and give him this immigration bill so that he can then go out along with the Democrats, give the Democrats all this ammunition so they can go out and say, hey, it was a Republican speaker in a Republican-controlled House who got the votes for this immigration bill, and it's the president who won't sign it. He's the bad guy. Just go ask Paul Ryan. Thank you, Big Ears Eddie Munster Ryan, for being an asshole once again. I wish we could oust him now. We need Jim Jordan now. Jim Jordan was speaker. This would not be happening. I can assure you of that. It's also Paul Big Ears, Eddie Munster Ryan, who's, who's uh, uh, not getting behind the Freedom Caucus to force Rodenstein to do his damn job. Paul Ryan's behind that too. He needs to go, and he can't go quick enough. Well, my friends, that's the early, what we have early on the IG report. There'll be much, much, much more coming. It's 553 pages, a lot to sift through. It looks like to me like a thousand knife cuts, no big bombshell, but a lot of things here that are certainly going to um, uh, raise the intensity level and hopefully result in either a presidential commission, a special counsel, or something. But at this point, yes, it looks like they're going to try to get off with sensitivity training and uh, something like that. doesn't look like they see any crimes Funny, I see crimes everywhere. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow. See you. Bye.